Number 62. Which of the postulates of Dalton's atomic theory explains why we can calculate a theoretical yield for a chemical reaction? Okay, so I listed out here the five postulates of Sir Dalton's atomic theory. Um, we just have to figure out which one we can talk about in terms of a theoretical yield for a chemical reaction. Now, just know that a theoretical yield is always your calculated it's a calculated uh, amount of a product. So a theoretical yield is in theory, it's not actual, it's in theory if there was no errors in life and no mistakes, um, what would be the maximum amount of product that we could make from a chemical reaction? And a chemical reaction is always supposed to be balanced, right? A chemical reaction, if I just say, like A, maybe I'll say 2A plus B2 will yield AB. And maybe I'll put a 2 in front of here. If we just see that this is balanced, I have two A's, two A's. I got two B's, two B's. And this equation is balanced. So in, in this case, you could find a theoretical yield on AB because a theoretical yield is always linked with the product. But it's all about this idea that everything is supposed to be balanced. And we have balanced equations. These twos, and there's a one, B2, those are your mole ratios. So let's see which one from the postulates talks about an idea of maybe balancing or, uh, you know, keeping things in constant with each other from a reactant to a product, but let's see. So number one, matter is composed of exceedingly small particles called atoms. An atom is the smallest unit of an element that can participate in a chemical change. Eh, this one doesn't really state anything about uh, making a product and how the equation has to be balanced. This is just saying that atoms are small. Cool. This is out. Number two, an element consists of only one type of atom, which has a mass that is characteristic of an element and is the same for all atoms of that element. A macroscopic sample of an element contains an incredibly large number of atoms, all of which have identical chemical properties. Ugh, we're getting there. We're talking about elements now and how, you know, an element contains a lots of atoms, but still this postulate does not talk about, you know, get, getting a product. It's not anything balanced. So number two's out. Number three, atoms of one element differ in properties from atoms of all other elements. Uh, that just means that all elements are very, very, very different, right? Because of the atomic number. So this one's out. Number four, a compound, all right, so now we're getting bigger. A compound consists of atoms of two or more elements combined in a small whole number ratio. In a given compound, the number of atoms of each of these elements are always present in the same ratio. All right, so now we're getting into it where we're talking about ratios, balanced equations, chemical reactions. So let's just see what five says and then maybe we can decipher between the two. So five says, atoms are neither created nor destroyed during a chemical change, but are instead rearranged to yield substances that are different from those present before the change. Ah, oh, this is literally talking about a balanced equation. They're literally spelling it out for you of what happens during a balanced equation. Nothing can be created nor destroyed. Everything is just transferred. That's why if you have an A and you got two of them, you have to have two A's on the other side. If you got two B's, you gotta have two B's on the other side as well. Nothing is created nor destroyed. And you're yielding, yield, theoretical yield, is a fancy way for just saying produce. So if you're yielding substances, you're producing substances, a theoretical yield is a theoretical product. Product comes from produce. Um, and those are different from those present before the change. So 
I think we got our answer. Which of the postulates explains? I would say it's definitely number five. Now, number four, a little bit because they're talking about that small whole number ratio. So this is starting you off because they're talking about a compound with the same ratio. So I would even star this one off as well, but definitely number five. And that's it. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to helping you in future lessons. Um, yeah. Talk to you then. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.